Door to door knocking, waking up the uprising. See, we the movement, more than music. Winning all these battles, man, we no longer losing. See, I'm a rebel, man. It's so contagious. They don't even really want me in their job placements. It's outrageous. They are so racist. The system needs a face. And uh, 23 out of 24 voted against the rule for him. And yes, there is some correlation between those two facts. <laughs> Um, it was only in the most recent um, parole hearing two years ago, in June of 2014, that there finally was an African American parole board member that was on the panel that he spoke to, and it actually listened to him, and it said, yeah, it makes sense for you to be out. So. Um, there's the handouts that we have up there, this, Jaleel actually typed that up himself. He doesn't have a computer, but he has a typewriter, and so um, he typed it up and sent it to me. Um, and that gives a lot of background, and it's written in a way so it's aimed at a more um, general audience, meaning it's not aimed at people that frequent the flying squirrel, or Metro Justice, or whatever, you know. Because um, the, the point is that in order to be supportive of Jaleel, we need to expand beyond the small group of people that that automatically would be supportive of him and try to find, you know, more supporters. So there are evangelical Christians, you know, that just uh, believe that, uh, you know, in prison reform, there's libertarians that believe that, you know, there shouldn't, uh, you know, it's government overreach to have so many people in prison. So. People should try to reach out, not just to our usual friends, but to try to expand the base of support for Jaleel, because on the, on the other side, the patrolman's so-called benevolent association, the, the, the police organization, um, they are able to send out, you know, from their database, you know, emails to tens of thousands of people every time there's a parole hearing coming up for Jaleel or anyone else who is involved in any way or suspected in any way of, of harming police. So um, they have a massive campaign and Shannon's going to talk a little bit about the, I think, the makeup of the, the, the parole board in general and, you know, where, where these people come from. Um, but, you know, it's already a situation that's not very favorable. Jaleel's next parole hearing, his ninth parole hearing, is um, on June 14th. And one of the things that we're hoping to do is that sometime earlier in June, in Rochester, Buffalo, Albany, and New York City, and maybe some other places, hopefully on the same day, if, if it works, is to have events in, in all of the cities across the state. Um, last year, we walked to the parole board offices, which is kind of near St. Joe's on, on South Avenue, near where Mount, um, Mount Hope and South Avenue come together in that area. So we may do that again. We're still, we're still trying to figure that out. That, that'll be a statewide thing. And um, hopefully everyone here afterwards will try to make sure that we have everyone's email addresses so that we'll be able to notify people. But um, anyway, anyway um, let me, let me stop there for a moment. Any questions about anything? Okay. So um, one of the things that we need to do to be helpful to Jaleel is uh, um, sending letters to the head of the parole board, and that's something that at the end we can we can do. Um, but uh, I mean, there's a lot more. Oh, the other thing that we're, we're looking for is so housing opportunities for Jaleel, so like I'm inviting him to live at my house, but if we can get a few different housing opportunities for him in writing that can go to him and to his attorneys, that would be helpful as they pr pr prepare the parole file, it'll be submitted to the parole board. The other thing that we're looking for is employment opportunities for him. Um, so just an example of one of the reasons that the two, two of the two parole commissioners that voted against him last time, they cited, they cited some disciplinary issues. So here, here's the disciplinary issues that Jaleel has had in the last few years. He had two postage stamps 
loose postage stamps, meaning not attached to an envelope, um, in his pocket on his way to or from the law library. I mean, that's that's the level of you know things that they're that they're looking for 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 him. Did you hear about the book? Yes, and his book. So yeah, so his book and there's a thing about his book, his book of poetry that just came out. So his his book, um, he ordered a copy of his book to come to him, and they confiscated it. They said he couldn't have his own book. Like it's dangerous for him to read the things that he himself mm -hmm. has written. They confiscated his book and a few other books. They found it in a really ridiculous way too. Like he ordered a bunch of books, and the books went through the package room where they check all the stuff, yeah. and then the CEO that was like going to deliver it to his cell saw a picture of him on the back. It was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> you can't have this. It will make him the book that's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I saw yeah. this. What? I also have this too that I can pass around right now. It's like, you could sign this little petition and I can send it in. But, um, yeah, so there's the issue of books. And then just an example of some of the stuff that Jaleel does. Um, the um, at the prison, in the visitor's room, the vending machines, the profits from the vending machines are supposed to be used for prisoners' welfare issues, like enhancing the TV stations that they get or something like that. But Jaleel found out that the money instead was going to fix up the office of the warden. So he initiated a lawsuit. Um, you know, and when he does these types of things, number one, it doesn't endear him to to the guards there. But the other thing is that sometimes there's a situation where he gets to when he gets to court, he gets to cross examine the guards and other prison officials there. Um, the state doesn't like that, so the state has tried to make a deal with him on certain things, and he keeps saying, "I'll make a deal with you. Give me parole." And you know, and, you know, if you use my disciplinary situation, and his disciplinary situation is actually really good. I yeah. mean, he really hasn't <laughs> caused real, you know, tr you know, physical trouble or violence there. I mean, you know, the, it's just like having a snap in your pocket or stuff like that. But. Um, because of uh, of this, they've tried to make deals with him, but he says, you know, if you're denying me parole because of, you know, stupid things like stamps, there's no deal other than, you know, granting parole. Uh, one of the other things that he's tried to do is to get, um, see if they, he could get on some sort of work release program also. But, I mean, they're just, he's a political person, so they're, they, they're not really interested in that. So, um, you know, the truth is that it's an uphill battle. I mean, even if we have a place for him to live, a place for him to work, and all these other stuff, I mean, that's necessary, but it may not be sufficient, but we need to, to try. So. Sure. Um, I'm just going to talk about parole and kind of how it works a little bit. And like you said, Julio's up for his ninth time, and we have some interesting facts that we found today. Um, like, as of 2013, there's 2 million people incarcerated in the United States. And then one in 50 are on probation or parole. So that means that one out of every 35 people in the United States is either on probation, on parole, in, and in jail. So it's just pretty ridiculous. Um, there's currently 14 board members on the parole. Um, it's all appointed by the governor. Some of them are still on there from Governor Pataki. The majority of them are. And one, one man has served like 30 something years and he doesn't get out till 2019. It's, and it's just like, uh, um, and some, most of them are um, point out, point out, like law enforcement and they have little to no experience or anything. No, no sort of background. Um, and like how, how and, and so yeah. the types of people that would be would be logical to be on the parole board. Might be social workers, yeah. psychologists, psychiatrists, clergy people, community organizers, people that are involved in how people reintegrate integrate into the community. That that would be the logical type of person. Yeah, but, and that's and something that they don't even they um, don't look at. There's been um, in 2012 there was legislation passed um, to actually look at the um, inmates like good time and what they've done while they're incarcerated and see who they are now. And then one of the main women um, publicly is like, no, we're not, we don't have to do that. And like, so they have like three 
and three, the executive was. One is relief is incompatible with the welfare of society. That's one thing that they look at. He or she would not live and remain at liberty without violating the law. And then relief would so deprecate the nature of the instant offense as to undermine the respect of the law. So they're really, really focused on what did he do and the nature of the crime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then in small fine print at the bottom of that law, it says that they can change. It is um, the board may revise or modify the guidelines in whole or in part. So they can <laughs> they don't really have, do whatever they want. They don't have rules. <laughs> There's like working people that can just do whatever they want. And currently, um, I just read that they don't even have to see the person. They, they don't have to come in person, they can Skype them and be like, yeah, yeah now they can Skype. That's so. the way they, yeah, that's what they do with Jaleel, right? What? Yeah. That's what they do with Jaleel? Well, Jaleel, yeah, yeah, Jaleel doesn't meet them, he stays in Attica, and they're in, they're in Rochester, at the office in Rochester or wherever. Yeah, and, and so yeah. they just Skype them, and then it's just, just Oh, they they still see each other on the board too because mm -hmm. my dad actually served on a conditional release board for Livingston County and he got kicked off the board because he was like too lenient. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, so 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 I'm wondering the woman who actually was supportive of Jaleel mm -hmm. if she'll get reappointed. Yeah. Yeah. It's very possible that she. Her name is Hal Hal Rahan or something like that. She's from. I think originally from Buffalo, so, so they're all like, you should pay yeah. attention to that. And they focus on deny, 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 because actually they're more worried about the governor who's appointed them and how they look in the public. It's like, oh, is the governor allowing all these convicts to run free or whatever? Because so it's not just the Benevolent Association that goes against people getting out. There's also like a few other organizations that is, it's like victims of violent crime or something yeah. that also do letter writing, there is a lot of pressure from the opposing side. Yeah, it's, it's huge in the network. Oh, and by the way, um, mm -hmm. the son of one of the two police officers that was yeah. killed has come out in support of Jaleel's parole. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. Yeah, he does want to think of it account for something in any other situation. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, and then the another big problem with the parole is the um, indeterminate sense of sentencing. So any crime before 1998 was like um, whether violent or not is like so you get in trouble, you get three to five years. You know, three years is a then you're eligible for parole, um, but they they can keep you in there even over your maximum, even after your five years. So Jaleel is. Um, eligible first in 2002, and he is now 19 years over his minimum. Yeah, he got 25 for life, and he's been at 44, 40, so, 40, so yeah, 40, 19 40. years ago he was theoretically eligible. To and this is his ninth time for all board. Yeah. Have they like had to at least give, according to those guidelines, their reasons for denying parole? Those three reasons that I they can just use those sentences. It's, it's yeah. pretty much the nature of the crime over and over again. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, it's a very actually, generic sort of so thing. Yeah. They don't, they don't give it. We can never forgive you. The nature of the crime will never change. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's the thing that yeah. they, that's what everyone says. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah I can't but the other two don't even sound like it could apply if he's like peaceful and but they're just. Right. Yeah. 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 All they need is one. The first one all they need is one. Isn't there some, isn't yeah. there some yeah. law that got passed that says they have to take into account like good behavior? Yeah, but, yeah. but they don't really. There's nothing to hold people. Yeah, the woman that. says that she's not. They're not. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just like, yeah. I mean, it's really because he got convicted of killing the cop. Yeah, like it's right. that's the only reason. That's it. Yeah. yeah. And he's a troublemaker. Cause well, I don't know. Not in the last, what, 10, 15 years? No, no, I mean, troublemaker meaning police. Yeah, but even now, I mean, he, like I was telling Jose, I do a, a program at Attica, and he will not even come to the program because he's worried about being seen as, like, instigating mm. things. Yeah. He's, like, super silent. Just, like, chilling. Have you met him? Yeah. Okay. Has anyone else here met Julio? Yeah. No, Okay. That's great. Okay. Um. Yeah, and um, I was going to ask you actually to talk a little bit about the 
Parole Act. There. So there is a, there's a there's something called the Safe Parole Act, which um, you know activists, prison reform and parole reform activists in the state are trying to get. It's a statewide thing, um, and I should have brought it. I don't remember the exact legislative you know number for for things, but it's something they've been trying for for a few years, and it's to try to change the definition of how they look at at parole, meaning trying to focus less on the nature of the crime and more on the nature of the individual and their ability to integrate into society, et cetera, and to basically compel, the, hopefully, compel the parole board to change the focus. But, you know, again, I, I don't know how likely that is. I mean, certainly with the Senate and, you know, in the hands of the Republicans, it's not likely. And there's also a governor that's not that progressive. I mean, this is, this is the governor who invited um, Hillary Clinton to today to his um, celebration of the $15 an hour minimum wage, which really isn't $15 an hour. And Hillary thought that $12, $12 an hour was good, so it's just sort of really, you know. Um, this is the I government who doesn't pardon anyone either. Yeah, I have a question. Has Jaleel tried to transfer to a medium? No. Um, no. no. Jaleel, they don't allow him to choose, first of all. Where he is. Yeah, but the guys can submit to move down to like a meeting. Yeah, I'm, done that? I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't. He got moved from, from. There was another one he was at in like the 90s. In New York. Well, it looks as like a but. I mean, it's like he's been at every maximum in New York State. Honestly. Yes, That's yeah. what it yes. Like. he's been at all maximums. And I think. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think that. I mean, what he's tried to do is to. Well, I think that he, he asked for a work release, and I don't think mm -hmm. his work release from Attica. So. Um, I think that by asking for that, that would mean transferring to a lower level mm. of security. But the, uh, the other thing, just in general, that, that we're trying to do is find connections in Attorney General Snyderman's office to see if we can find somebody there who would be sympathetic. Mm. Um, you know, I tried with locally, I tried Joe Morelli's office. Not that I had high expectations, but, <laughs> you know, I just thought, well, it makes sense to you know, talk to people in the assembly. Well, first I talked to Louise Slaughter. So Louise basically said, this isn't a federal issue, it's a state issue. And I said, so and so, so it's a federal issue. Mm -hmm. But she still said that it really is a state issue. Mm -hmm. So then, I, you know, figuring state legislature, okay, Joe Morelli's office, just, I don't know, because he's, he's my mm -hmm. assemblyman. But the guy, his, his legislative assistant, whatever, kept, kept coming back to things. But this is a cop killer, you know. I mean, it just—it it, it was—it's not going. There's, there's, there's very few politicians that will stick their neck out for someone yeah. like that, unless they're lame duck. So, I mean, it would be nice if Obama, like, at the end of his term, you know, since he's he's, he's paroled a lot of low-level yeah. drug people, etc. So it would be nice if you know he would parole, you know, some political people also. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have a big expectation that that will happen, but, you know, I mean, it's a place where we need to apply pressure in a number of months, you know, when we get closer to, to that time. Um, but I think that maybe there's people in the Attorney General's office. Now, the Attorney General himself, if he has higher political ambitions, he's not going to do anything that's going to piss off the, the police union. But, I don't know. Anyway. Got it. Yeah, yeah. The word union, the word union and police. I mean, it's a little bit of an oxymoron, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But whatever. So, what we should really do before before if, before people start to leave is um, write letters on on the two page thing that you have that just that Jaleel wrote. On the back, there's the um, address of Tina Stafford. 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 Yeah. And. Um, we want to make sure that people write letters to her. And then if you give me the letters, what I'll do is I'll make photocopies and I'll send a copy to Jaleel's lawyers, a copy to Jaleel, and then I'll send the originals out. Because we want to make sure the copies go to other people. So I'll, I'll worry about mailing them if people can, can write the letters. And write them, you know, how it makes it, you know, the idea is to write personal letters. Yeah, if you were. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And there's more copies of the paper here. I mean, if you want to 
the whole idea is to give that to other people to spread the word and also to go to Jaleel's website and, and look at it. So, I've already written I've written stuff and I have to, I'm sending him a letter and I'm housing the other areas. Does anyone have any jobs? So you said something about a job opportunity? Um, yeah, we were talking about with um, ICAG. I just have to get the, get it written up. Um, okay, that would be good. And then send and it then to... Possibly with... Okay. Um, I think Action for a Better Community also does programming right now with prisoners as facilitators. Mm -hmm. So they might be willing to oh, right. them, offer him like an educator job or something like that. Are you able to? I don't have any contacts there. I still work there. I can go. Talk nice. Okay. Cool. That'd be great. That I'm chasing, I no longer fight the struggle. I embrace it, remix the movement, add a bit of flavor, add a bit of hood to it, that'll do some good to it. Add a little rage and add a little shook to it, add a little Huey P. Mix it up with you and me, black and brown unity, always under scrutiny. We starting up a mutiny, no to impunity. Yes to my community, yes to my community. The harder they come, boy, the harder they fall. So we throw them overboard while we 